Welcome. In this video we're going to create a simple star mask and show how and why you would use it with HDR wavelets and morphological transformation. Though there are many more uses for star masks in PI but um, this should give you a taster. Here I have my good friend M106 from the previous tutorials and to start with I'm going to select the star mask tool. There's quite a lot of settings in this tool, but usually I only alter these top two or three here. What I want is to create a star mass which encompasses all the stars, and usually I want the mask to be larger than the stars with some soft edges, smoothness as we call it here, to feather any processes in we apply to our image. As usual with these settings, as in all the other tools, you'll need to experiment. My favourite word to get the correct settings for your image. And I've found virtually every image has a slightly different setting, so there isn't a universal setting with this tool. Now, on this image, I found after experimenting, I need to lower the threshold. And that's it. But we'll quickly go over a couple of these items here. This is scale. I'm going to leave this at 5 because that picks up all the stars within this image. If you've just got lots of small stars in your image, you can probably lower it down to 4. If you've got some large stars, you might have to increase it to 6. And these three do what it says on the tin. It'll just take a few seconds to read them and alter them if you need to. I'm going to leave this mode the basic star mask because the one I use the most. Then apply away to our image. Okay, I've created a star mask. Just minimize this out of the way a second. Which covers most, if not all, the stars. If you look, you can align these up with the stars on the image. Do not expect to create a star mask in one go, and several tries are usually required to fine tune your settings. Now we've created our mask, let's use it. I'm going to start off by using HDR wavelets, and you may have noticed that, um, how this sometimes inverts bright stars and gives a donut effect. Like this on the of the workspace. As you can see the central part of the stars have been inverted creating a donut effect. Donuts might be good for eating but no good on air images. OK, back to the worst worst base. To prevent this we'll protect the stars with a mask we've just created. We apply the mask in the usual way by clicking it and dragging it to the sidebar. And I'll just minimise the mask out of the way. Don't close it because it's still being used. At the moment this mask is protecting the background, that's not what we want. So what we need to do is invert the masks so the stars are protected and not the background. And we'll do this by going to the mask toolbar up here. You see, it says invert, and that's what we'll do. Click on it. There we have all our stars masked and protected with the background free. Okay, I'm going to apply HDR wavelets as I've done in the previous tutorial. I'll just do this quickly. Okay, and two layers. This is all as per my previous tutorial. Okay, when we finish with that, we close that down and now remove the mask up here. Okay, to show you what's happened, I'll just go on to so the workspace here we have the before 
no mask, donuts. And with the mask, no donuts. Good for your diet. Good stuff. Okay, back to the first workspace. And now I'm going to use a star mask with the morphological transformation tool to reduce the star sizes. Which I now call MT because I can't say morphological transformations too many times without my tongue getting tied. The reason we use a mask with this tool is when we use MT, if you apply it to the whole image, it has a detrimental effect to M106. So, what we're going to do is apply the mask as before and minimize it out of the way. Now, this time I'm going to leave the mask as it is because I want to protect the background, just leave the stars for MT to work on. Okay. I go and get MT. Okay. Now to see what's going on, I'm actually going to hide the mask. Which if you go up here, click on show mask, and the mask is still active, it's just that you can't see it. Okay, I don't know if you used MT before, but we're going to use it to reduce star sizes in this image. And for that we're going to leave it with the default erosion. And I'm going to pick a size for it to work with, which is 5. Which I find fine with, with my star sizes. I'm going to use the circular structure shape. Which is what you should be using if your stars are round. Um, in theory, if they're not round, you can use some other shapes, but that's a bit beyond this tutorial. At the moment, select it circular, select it size 5, and I'm going to reduce it the amount to about 0.4, which I find normally about OK. Now I'm going to apply this to the whole image rather than the preview because it's, it's a pretty quick process and it doesn't take long. OK, there we are. Now what I'm going to do is remove the mask, even though it's not visible, I'm just still on there. OK, I'm going to zoom in. And click on Undo Redo to see the changes. Quite subtle, but I didn't want a lot of reduction. But um, you can apply it multiple iterations or increase the amount. As you can see on the image, the core of M106 hasn't been altered. As I said earlier, there are many uses of masking pixie insight. I hope this taster helps you out. See you again next time.